What's up guys, welcome back to Next Gaming where we cover everything newsworthy that pertains to games. Here's something big to kick off the news day. Sony's PlayStation division, Sony Interactive Entertainment, has now acquired roughly 14% of Elden Ring Studio from software, which is a vast increase from its initial 1.93% stake it previously had. Aside from Sony, Tencent has also increased its share in From Software to 16%. Does this mean From Software games are going to be PlayStation exclusives? No, probably not. However, I'm sure this will result in bigger games being developed and possibly another PlayStation collaboration such as Bloodborne 2 or maybe the Bloodborne remake for PS5 like a lot of fans have been, you know, proclaimed they wanted for years from now, but we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? Next, Saints Row sales top the charts for the UK. So yeah, uh, Saints Row's reboot, even with the massive amounts of problems, has managed to top the UK charts. I guess names do stick, don't they? Also, we're getting a new Ultimate controller from 8-Bit, up for pre-order at $70. Honestly, it looks pretty slick. I might pick one up. It appears to try to mitigate the issues of stick drift. I don't know if you guys think maybe this is, you know, if this innovation actually helps with the, the stick drift. Do you think the industry is going to kind of implement this into their, their own controllers, you know? The stick drift is, is widely known on every controller. Obviously, the Switch has it the worst, but, you know, what can you do? Here we have an Assassin's Creed rumor. Uh, the title is rumored to be Mirage, set to release spring 2023 between April and June. The game will take place in Baghdad between 870 and 860 AD. It's going to apparently be a return to basics with no leveling system. You will apparently play as Basim and his youth with multiple cities to explore and a strong influence from the first Assassin's Creed seems to be implemented. Several RPG elements removed, meaning no dialogue choices, no leveling system, as I said before. Uh, said to have a slightly different gameplay compared to Valhalla, with string dagger combat available. I think that was from uh, when Basim was in, in the game. You actually never got to use that. Uh, Eagle Vision is back as well. The leak goes on to say Ubisoft is secretly preparing for the Assassin's Creed 1 remake, planning to also be a DLC included in the season pass of Assassin's Creed Mirage. We're supposed to get the reveal from Ubisoft during Ubisoft Forward, September 10th. Uh, if the leaks, if the leaks real, then you know we're gonna find out very shortly. But you know that sounds very interesting. I think overall, you know the combat in, in Valhalla wasn't terrible. I want to see what they do with that. Uh, the RPG elements seem to be okay. I think the main problem with Assassin's Creed Valhalla was just the filler, you know, and maybe you know they didn't focus as much as they should on the story that type of details but overall the gameplay and the RPG mechanics were amazing you know the skill tree was probably one of the biggest skill trees I've ever seen in a game honestly so or at least in a, in a console game or just an Assassin's Creed in general but I'm excited I, I want to see what they're gonna do I want to see if Ubisoft can turn this around and if they realize what they all the mistakes they've been doing and also an Assassin's Creed 1 remake sounds awesome I cannot wait because the first one is it's a little choppy to go back and play a decade later or more yeah it's like oh my god <laughs> playstation plus september games have been revealed also looks like we're all getting at least need for speed heat and uh grand blue fantasy if you're into that i honestly don't know what that is but uh and a photo adventure game which i i don't care at all but you know i got need for speed heat so this really doesn't apply to me um and that's the only tier i have is just the the base tier premium and extra also got some big titles with Deathloop, Watch Dogs 2, if you're into Dragon Ball Z, they have Xenoverse 2. Also probably the biggest title to me for this month is Assassin's Creed Origins, because you know, obviously that's, that's, I don't think that, I thought that was on PlayStation Plus, but I, I don't know, obviously not, but that that's the biggest, like that's the only title that actually was decent to me. Deathloop was kind of disappointing, Watch Dogs 2 was disappointing, um, I'm not a huge Dragon Ball Z fan. So I haven't really played the Xenoverse series, but you know, there's there's really nothing there for me. Also, Monsters Supercross game. I didn't even know they had an official game. I thought they, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know they had a game. And uh, finally, a couple games like you know indie titles, and then you have uh, Raymond Legends and Scott Pilgrim vs. the World as well. PlayStation Plus Premium Classics has added Siphon Filter 2, the Sly Collection, including Thieves in Time. Also, Toy Story 3 and something called Bentley's Hack Pack. I don't know what that is. Overall, it seems like a good addition. 
is it enough to upgrade to the expensive tiers for you guys personally i own most of the games from the extra tier and there aren't enough premium classics to dive in that yet uh and it's really kind of expensive especially just for classic games but maybe in the future when you know the the, the catalogs you know massive it isn't just a handful of of games that are nostalgic to me you know because I, I mean i don't know what bentley's backpack is you know what <laughs> do i care about toy story 3 not really i own the sly games on ps3 and then i think i even own siphon filter on the playstation so i don't know it just isn't enough for me to be interested maybe if they show something that is just like long forgotten it would interest me i don't know tell me what you guys think Modern Warfare 2 also got a leak on Twitter that's since been removed, however a Reddit user managed to compile all of the clips together. Overall, what I got from it is it looks like there might be some graphical updates, but what was most interesting was the fact you could jump to an SUV and take over Halo style with these Michael Bay level destruction around the cars on the road. That was, that was pretty cool, but I think the graphics, I think the updated graphics kind of helped with that because overall it's just like... Uh, it looks literally just like uh, Vanguard when you're on the train and you're jumping from train to train. It's similar to that, but obviously it's you know it has that Infinity War twist to it, to where it's actually it just looks exciting. You know, it might be very uh, timid, but you know from the leak it looks somewhat exciting. Konami says they'll announce a new game from a series loved around the world at the Tokyo Game Show on September 16th. What do you guys think it will be? I mean, obviously their their biggest franchises are Metal Gear. Silent Hill, maybe Castlevania, with how good the series reception has been, you know. But that's that's their big three, I feel like. You know, their uh, their soccer game kind of flopped, and I haven't really seen anything. Like, I looked through their catalog for the past 10 years. There really isn't anything widely loved, unless they're talking about, like, a PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, you know, throwback that had a niche fan base. But I think they're talking about something major, especially for the Tokyo Game Show. They're, they're definitely bringing either, I'm going to honestly say Silent Hill or maybe another Castlevania game. I think it's too early for another Metal Gear, unless, you know, unless that's what they're doing, but I don't think it's it's going to be Metal Gear. I think it's either going to be Silent Hill or Castlevania. Hopefully Silent Hill, honestly, but, you know, another Castlevania title isn't, isn't too bad. When Callisto Protocol Dev was asked what he thinks of the future of the industry with these subscription models, he replied, I don't know. If we compare it with the cinema, all the platforms I have have many very bad movies, even the ones that Netflix promotes. A lot. In several cases, they are horrible in many cases because the budget is low. He continued to say, AAA games are expensive, so if we could reduce the cost, although I don't know how, maybe it could be profitable. If the companies had a lot of money, Microsoft does have the money, they're buying giant companies and bringing everything to this type of service. So maybe that's the right way to go. Something like that is going to happen with Activision where I spent many years and where I think Microsoft is going to do a great job as well. I don't know where the video game industry is going. There are a lot of very smart people inside. There are thousands of branches. And I think there is something for everyone. The market is so big that there is room for all kinds of games. Now honestly that's just, uh, I don't know, it sounds really positive because I feel like if Microsoft really took over the market with Game Pass on a, on a massive scale, Sony would be hurting in some form. I think uh, I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting that the industry thinks that you know this you know this is possibly a, a good route. But it's also if you if you do compare it to the cinema platforms, Netflix if if it turns if they want their goal to be to become the Netflix of gaming, in many cases that's not very good. You know, it's not it's not a that's where I, I make the comparison of if, if if Xbox wants to be the Netflix of of gaming, then that would mean that Sony is sort of the the hbo but hbo is cheaper than netflix so really it's like opposite i guess for gaming so really sony is the netflix of gaming <laughs> i don't know i'm just shooting the shit but i think uh i don't know microsoft does have the the money to buy a lot of companies and bring that to their service and make a, a decent subscription model so if they do it right and everything looks good and you know that a lot of the games are great and not just you know trending you know so i don't know we'll find out especially if you know the playstation tiers start to really update their their ump coming every month because you know that this was a good month i'll say it, it you know you got a lot of games that a lot of people were into and it's you know it's only been a year 
you know i think some people want the day one but i think you know a year waiting a year and you might get it on playstation plus is a decent bargain you know but it just sucks because you don't know which games and so forth but you know if you if you did pass on on death loop and you know you wanted to check out that game of the year or uh, actually it wasn't game of the year but it got a couple of awards but you know if you wanted to check that out it's free on playstation plus if, if you have the tier you know so i think they're up in their game i'm really interested to see where this all goes especially going into 2023 we got playstation trying to go into live service you got a lot of big releases and reveals obviously coming soon hopefully <laughs> So yeah, it's uh can't wait. See where this goes. Anyway, that's it for today guys. It's been Next Gaming. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more of my videos. Peace. Uh, oh,